Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. In this set of lectures, we will look at molecular spectroscopy, which is an important discipline for chemistry, physics, biology, biophysics and practically all of science. It is also one of the most fundamental subjects in the sense that atomic spectroscopy and the molecular spectroscopy are the basis, experimental basis from which many of the principles of quantum mechanics evolved. In the chemistry laboratory, spectroscopy is an extremely important technique. There is not one single technique of spectroscopy. In fact, it is of such a wide range that we can have detection techniques or spectroscopic techniques from radio wave frequencies to uh, X-rays and even higher in energy. We will see as, you, as we go along, what are the different types of spectroscopy, why we need to do that and so on. So, we will first look at molecular spectroscopy. What is spectroscopy? Molecular spectroscopy. Why do we need it? And how do the how do we understand the practices? That's of course the most uh, important series of questions that one should ask in understanding this. And this is not a pretense that we will answer all of them convincingly to everybody. It is not possible because it is of such a wide range. In this series of lectures, we are going to look at only the most elementary aspects of molecular spectroscopy. What exactly is meant by molecular spectroscopy? The simple answer is that it is the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter. That is a broad definition for molecular spectroscopy or even spectroscopy as a whole. And when you talk about the matter, if you restrict your attention to molecules, then you talk about this, this particular branch of spectroscopy. When you talk about the electromagnetic radiation, it of course has a very, very wide range of frequencies. Recall from the previous uh, learning that you had that classically one thinks of electromagnetic radiation as a wave. Quantum mechanically, electromagnetic radiation or after Einstein discovered in 1905 through his interpretation of the photoelectric effect that electromagnetic radiation consists of photons. There are these two interpretations. We will use the idea for most of our lectures, the interpretation that the electromagnetic radiation is a wave. It consists of oscillations in electric fields, oscillations of electric fields, oscillations of magnetic fields perpendicular to the directions of the electric field and both perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light. It is the interaction of the electric component of radiation with the electric properties of molecule or interaction of the magnetic component of radiation with the magnetic properties of matter, which determine what we observe in molecular spectroscopy. So, let me go back to some of the slides. We will see them, these questions quantified. This module is the, uh, will consist of several lectures. The first lecture is on the introductory concepts and electronic spectroscopy. 
initially we will look at the introductory concepts. If time permits, this lecture will continue on to electronic spectroscopy, otherwise this will be done in a later lecture. Let us see what are the things that we asked so far. Why do we study spectroscopy? Let us look at the properties of the electromagnetic radiation in terms of the electric and magnetic field oscillations and what we mean by the interaction of radiation with matter and what do we mean by spectra. Some of the basic terminologies we will clear in this lecture. One quantitative law that most of you should be familiar with when you study spectroscopy, particularly visible spectroscopy is a well known law in chemistry known as the Beer Lambert law. We will also show a little bit about what that law means. Okay. Why do we need to study spectroscopy as a chemist or as a physicist or even as an engineer? The reason for the study of spectroscopy is that of course, this is what throws light on what matter is. Most laboratories, if you think of analytical laboratories, organic chemistry laboratories, the uh, medical labs, the bio labs that you think about, whatever labs you do go to, you see that they use one or the other spectroscopic techniques to do the following, to identify possibly new compounds if they are research laboratories in what they synthesize to identify some intermediate species. If in a reaction some intermediate species are important and if they are stable and an analysis and a study of these intermediates tell us how to make specific synthesis and so on. So, it is used for us to as a technique to identify whether new compounds are intermediates and of course, many, many chemical laboratories use this in uh, uh, research labs to predict the reaction mechanisms of various chemical reactions and these are important for us to understand why molecules behave the way they do and how to make the best use of these reaction properties to the benefit, to benefit the mankind. Okay. That is as far as the research labs concerned with molecular nature in terms of quantitative detection. Now, also, if you think about at a molecular level, at a more fundamental level, spectroscopic techniques are used to understand the molecules themselves. Why molecules have the, uh, the shape and the structure and the properties that they have, a molecule having a dipole moment, a molecule having a polarizability. What do we mean by that and how do we understand them? How do we interpret these properties from our understanding of the molecules interaction with radiation. So, if you consider that physical chemistry laboratories use spectroscopic technique, particularly high resolution spectroscopic techniques to obtain information on molecular structural parameters, molecular geometries and properties such as transition frequencies. We will see them one by one. We will have to understand what a spectrum means before we can say these are all the reasons why we want to study. But the question is there is a motivation for understanding the subject. So, these are some of the reasons for with which we should study this particular subject. Electric dipole moments of molecules, there are properties called quadrupole moments of molecules, polarizabilities, the extent to which a molecule can be shaped or deshaped by the presence of an external electric field can be ch structural changes can be introduced, electrons can be influenced, all these things are uh, contained in the property called polarizability. The molecular moments of inertia very similar to the moments of inertia of rigid objects. The moments of inertia give us information on the molecular uh, structure and the angles between various bonds, chemical bonds, the, the geometrical nature of the molecule. The magnetic moments, one of the most important branches of spectroscopy is the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, which if you are not familiar, you are familiar 
in, in a certain way that when you go to the doctor and sometimes when you are prescribed to get a uh, MRI scan, a magnetic resonance imaging scan, the instrument works with the fundamental principles which you will understand here in the form of magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So, some of you have been to the lab, though it is not, uh, and it is, it is a fairly costly experiment to perform to find out what happens in your body. But MRI, for example, is a very famous example for you. X-ray is another famous example for you uh, that spectroscopic techniques are used on a day-to-day -day basis. At the most elementary level, that is at the microscopic level, if we really want to understand why a chemical reaction takes place, then it is very important to see how a chemical reaction evolves. Spectro the spectroscopy that we study and the advanced techniques based on the various methods allow us to map how a molecule undergoes changes during a chemical reaction. These days it is possible to photographically map the changes that take place using laser pulses, a branch known as the femtosecond spectroscopy, which is a very, very advanced technique. And it is one of the most fundamental techniques to explain what happens in a chemical reaction. Can we identify intermediates and so on. So, at the microscopic level, there is obviously the reason because all the quantum mechanical con considerations, all the results that you derive from quantum mechanics can be verified by these experimental techniques. Therefore, molecular spectroscopy permits us to study the reaction dynamics at the most fundamental level. Stop.